This episode dragged the shit out of these white gays. Oh, I'm black and I'm proud. I'm black, they can't keep me down. I'm black and black with a smile. A black beam of the man. Hey, y'all, it's producer, and today I am reviewing episode three of season two of Dear White People. And this episode focuses on Lionel and more or less on his relationship with Silvio and him um, trying to find himself. Um, as a gay black man and just as a person in general, like what group does he fit into? Multiple times throughout the episode, he's like said things and they take them back. He's like, oh, that's too much or eh, maybe I shouldn't say that with the Yas Queen, with the black gays. And then he was dragging the white gays and calling them out. He was like, oh, maybe a little too much. He just, he just needs to find himself. But yes, this episode is about that journey. So let's just, uh jump right into it <laughs> like i'm philip defranco but yeah so um the episode starts off with him worry about his style because like i said he wants to find a place that he fits into but um he like worries about this tire or whatever and afterwards it goes into the like the what's it called the history of the independent because you know goes into why he's in this style issue because he's going into pride night or Pride Party. It's not Pride Night because Pride is June. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you hoes wouldn't be in school at this time. But anyway, um, I'm sitting here trying to figure out, like, <sighs> Lionel, why do you care so much about other people's opinions? I mean, like, people sort of do to a certain degree, but he cares too much. But yeah, he wants to figure out what boxes he check off with, like who, what type of person he is. And then so after he gets Troy to help him out and we get to learn history on the independent, we learn, we get a confirmation that the independent is finito, which makes sense. I mean, it's endorsed by the Hancocks and you expose the Hancocks. But yeah, so Silvio's drunk ass just comes out of nowhere because apparently he was in the room this entire time. And basically it shows that they are doing the best because Silvio... They were going to hang out tonight, but he came into his room all drunk and he needed a place to crash. Which is the first sign of Silvio not really caring too much about Lionel and pretty much sort of using him. And then, so, um, Silvio feels bad because he really wants a place to find his keys. And I'm so glad Lionel called him out on that at the end. But... So, like I said, he wants to find his keys, so Silvio takes him on a wild goose chase through all the bars he's been to, all the gay events he's been to tonight, and um, Shory comes with because he wants to help him get some cheeks. I don't know, I thought that was very interesting that Shory was like, you know what, I'll go. Okay. Okay. Y'all really trying to set this, y'all, a lot of people think Troy. And, um, Lionel should be a thing. Troy's straight. Stop it. <laughs> but anyway, so Lionel goes to the first thing. And the first place was some it was something super white. I was like, uh-oh, we're doing this again. And they're all with their stereotypical gay selves. All these monk shows that Lionel doesn't watch. Making references that Lionel doesn't care about. And, um, Troy asked him, like, are these your people? And he was like, well... I mean, they're they're gay and they're writers, so maybe. And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't. You deserve better because, as we find out later in this scene, these white gays don't care about Lionel's black ass, and some of them, they literally only care about his black ass. If you know what I'm saying? Hashtag fetishization. And <sighs> Lionel f meets this um this black guy there. And I'm like, oh my gosh, Lionel, you found a black person there. But that should have been a dead giveaway. If there's only one black person at this super white event. Uh. <laughs> okay, sorry. I was, uh, someone trying to talk to me. But anyway, like I was saying, um, if there's only one black person at a white gay event, there's most likely that this person only dates other white gays. He doesn't date any other race. Or if he does, he just doesn't like black people. <laughs> so, I called him. I was like, DeAndre? More like Kundrick, as in Todrick Hall. But 
you know, because he, he's on that bullshit too. <laughs> but anyway, um, so like I said, he was uh, talking to these other people and was like, and one of them, they were like, oh, um, the rice queen. And he called them out for that. And he was like, well, how are you going to complain about like this type of stuff with you with your white ass calling Asians? I mean, not Asians, but he was like reducing them to like racial fetishes or whatever. Right. And he was like, oh, no, let me start. I mean, let me stop. That's too much. And I was like, no, I'll call them out for that. White gays think because they're gay, they can racism doesn't affect them. Um, yes, it does. You hoes can be racist. You guys can be very racist and be very gay. Um, just because you're oppressed in one way doesn't mean you can't be an oppressor. But yeah, call them out for that. And then, um, so and so comes in and he makes me question some because they start talking about the troll that's been annoying Sam. And he sits in there, he sits there and he's like, oh, you mean the guy that baits SJWs for laughs or something? And I'm sitting here like, I don't think any, any gay in this place went that far with their problematicness. And SJW, you all are gay in Silvio, aren't you like half Mexican or something? By that alone, you're technically an SJW if you speak on those experiences. So... That was a little interesting how he was pretty much defending the guy. Hmm. But, I mean, I don't... I don't think he's the person, though. Because if we think about logic, why would he be trolling? Because like I said, most of these things that he's talking about does affect him. But I mean, maybe they're just going to do it with the pullover heads. Because honestly, they have a thing in this show where they talk about Latinos and only broadcast like the lighter skin Latinos. Y'all have mestizos. And they really not looking like mestizos. I'm going to get onto that later. But y'all couldn't. I mean, I'm not asking for Afro-Latinos, but there are other Latinos. And you hoes showcase the lightest of the light. <laughs> Anyway, so, and when they move on from that place, uh, what's it called? Uh, they go to this one place that's in the, the radio station area. And I'm going to agree with Silvio to Lionel. How did you not know about this place? With your black gay ass. <laughs> you gonna deal with these tired ass people. But speaking of black gay ass, um, first of all, Troy... Well, he meets Brooke, but I mean, I, well, yeah, Troy meets Brooke, but I meant to say, what's his face? Lionel meets Brooke, but there's a lot that happens there. <laughs> She's upset, but I'm just going to make a video. But yeah, Kundrick is in the show. I was dead and <laughs> he's sort of being woke, but I mean, of course, in this show, just like in real life, he's defending Taylor Swift. Needs some consistency, I guess. <laughs> And so, um, after he meets up with them and he's like, you know, really questioning what space he fits into. I'm like, you don't have to fit into the space. Why don't you make your own? <laughs> he talks about later in the episode, like, why must we uphold these institutions and when, let's not make our own. You could do that for your own space, your own unique identity. That's sort of what I did at school. I mean, pretty unique, but I'm not going to get into that because y'all didn't come to hear my story. <laughs> but, um... What was it? So yeah, um, they leave out, and then Alino has a problem with uh, Silvio because he keeps talking to other people, and I'm like, it's not worth it. Silvio obviously isn't interested in you, so you need to do yourself a favor, break up with him, and be single, or just start fucking a lot of people. I don't know. So I'm still on a I don't really like Silvio train. Because, of course, he proves my point that he doesn't really like Lionel at all. And he just goes like, oh, well, well I mean, let, me, let me back it up. So Lionel basically realized that um, Silvio is just dragging him around and he's not really spending so much time with him. So we asked the question, so why did you kiss me? And 
he like clarifies like oh the night and he's like i know i know the night and i'm sitting here like is it because it's only the night it's the only night you kissed him mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i'm sitting here thinking like lionel you are this season's coco you are really ambitious and troy silvio is holding you back but yeah um lionel he said I kiss everyone. I mean, I kiss everybody. And he's like, well, you're not everybody. And he kisses him again to try and prove his point. I was like, Lionel, this is nothing. This is absolutely nothing. You need to just move on, okay? And then so we go to the final gay event. <laughs> so many gay events. And, of course, Lionel gets left. And he goes on his phone to avoid people. And then he meets this guy named Wesley, who's doing the same thing. And they meet, I mean, they, uh, not meet, but they get a, they bond over the fact that these white gays treat him like trophies. You're like, oh, look at me. I'm dating someone that's not white. And I think, I'm like, okay, well, first, did you hoes think he was Latino? His last name, Alvarez, but, like, did you hoes know he was Latino? I know white Latinos exist, but... I don't think he was running around here trying to... I think you say that Latino's a race, but it makes up mestizo, and I think he really... Sir, I would not look at you and say you were anything but. Maybe it was a bad lighting. I don't know. But, sir, your facial features, your skin tone, your hair texture, you weren't really giving me... <laughs> but he's Latino. And, of course, like I said, they keep showing all these really light-skinned Latinos... They're not, well, I don't even, I don't even know what to say. Point is, they keep showing this one type, this singular type. And I'm sitting here like, y'all could do better. And so, of course, of course, of course, um, after this, he gets, uh, Silvio comes back and he's sort of like, cough blocking him. And then... Uh, Lionel leaves and upset. I mean, leaves in rage, I guess. And then so they have a, a talk. And I'm just like, Lionel, you have all these ideas with ambitions. You're starting, sounds like you're starting, a, you want to start a new newspaper thing. And of course, Silvio is holding you back. And you said, like, oh, let's not uphold these institutions to start a new one. I don't know what, I don't remember the exact quote, but it was good. That was like some poetry. And I'm like, just drop Silvio, especially since he said that questionable stuff about the troll. I don't think he really would want to help you on that um, think piece, whatever it's called. Expose, maybe not expose, but what you're going to write about. I think he's going to help you with that. And then, I say that especially since Creepy Wesley, I mean, he's not creepy, but he found his information on Facebook. A little creepy. He only told you his first name and, like, a couple of things he did. But whatever, he found on Facebook and he did a friend request. And I'm like, if you have to be in a relationship, I'm okay with Wesley. But yes... Um, Justin Simeon and the other writers, maybe Chuck Hayward, hey, where they were dragging these white gays for being ignorant and stuff. And they're trying to uh, get us um, to see Lana's perspective of not really fitting anywhere. Maybe he doesn't need to fit anywhere with his race or his sexuality. Just go with a group of good writers. Maybe that. But anyway. Thank you all so much for watching. What did y'all think of the episode? Tell me in the comments below. And I'll be coming at y'all later with episode four of you. You black and you love it, put your hands up. If you black and in public, put your hands up.